what's up guys and uh, welcome to Eeyore's Flower Shop um, today. I'll be tying a Kelly Green, which is um, it's like an old school pattern by a friend of mine, Olger Andersson. Olger is a professional photographer and uh, you can see his webpage. I'm going to put a link, up, link to it up here in the corner if you like. Uh, he's an excellent guy taking pictures and has a great eye for, for it. He's an angler as well and he designed a few flies over his career. Kelly Green is probably the most known of them and uh, it works great for brown trout. It's basically named after the Kelly Green uh, chenille which is part of the body. And uh, yeah, let's jump to it. I'm going to tie, tie you guys a Kelly, Kelly Green and show you how it's done. So we have in our um, vise this hook and we are going to uh, tie the Kelly Green by Olger, here it is, original fly by himself. I'm going, going to tie a slightly diff slight differently and the only thing is the hat we are tying is a little bit different from what Olger is tying on his flies. Um, I'm using a sample fly. Um, Nano Silk uh, 50 Tenier in black for this fly. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel, of course. And uh, I'm using an RX NS118 Classic Streamer in the size 6, 8, or 10. I would say 8, probably. It's the most common number for this fly, but I'm going to tie it in 6 this time. Uh, this fly is known for that it's been a really successful pattern up in the Veidevatn area. And there is no, not that I'm familiar with, no story behind this fly except it's been successful and uh, only named the fly after the uh, body material that you use for it. And the original Kelly Green was um, was tied with a dumbbell ice, so I'm gonna tie it with a dumbbell ice just to keep it keep us to the original pattern as much as possible. But of course, now modern fly tires would use a dumbbell like real dumbbell ice that do not cut your thread uh, in an instance like those uh, old uh, fashioned bead chain bead chain ice can actually do a lot of they they tend to be very some some parts of it to be razor sharp and cut your thread so um, using just like a classic dumbbell ice either in silver or gold or or whatever uh, will probably be better than those um, those old-fashioned bead chain eyes i'm using For the um, tail of the fly, we'll be using a black marble, two feathers actually. Um, I'm using a strung, not a plume. It's a shorter feather, but has a, like a fluffy volume. It's great for tails on on bully buggers and and nobblers and those uh, flies. And as usual, of course, you can find the material list for the pattern in the video's description down below. It's always down there. Any video, we have uh, the pattern and some information about the fly in the description, always. Even some story on the fly, if there is a story, and, and then my own experience on it, how I've been fishing with it, and if I had success or not. So uh, here's the first part of the tail, and we will just snip the rest of the um, rest of the marble feather away, like like this. And wetting your fingers with a little bit of a saliva helps a lot with uh, working with the marble because the marble can be like kind of like a fluffy thing all over the place where you don't want it to be. So, wetting your finger is one way to just to keep it in place. 
that's my alt alternative method on it. So uh, as a decoration for the tail, we are using like two strands of this blue green. Uh, it's more like a green uh, crystal flash. Two strands of that make them like line them up even, cut them in half. So there is going to be four strands on each side of the tail. And when we measure that to the tail here, just keep it in place, lock it in with a few wraps, tight wraps, and then bring it over like so. And then you tune it for your for the camera side of the fly, like like this. And then what I do is I trim them. You don't see it with a picture, but uh, but I trim them in about level length with the tail. Um, pink, hot pink. Uh, is the next color we use for the tail. It almost disappears in the fly. But the deal is that um, it is supposed to be tied with just like a like a glimpse of, of this pink material material in the uh, tail. So I am going to uh, we're going to have a double tail. So uh, this will be the center of the tail, and then we will add like another black feather on it. So it's it will have its volume in the water and. Uh, and because when marabou, as you, most of you guys know, uh, when marabou gets wet, it gets really thin. So there is nothing wrong with that. In some scenarios, if you want to have your fly visible, is to use two, two feathers. Especially on this size of a fly. This is like, it is, after all, it's a six uh, streamer hook. So, make that feather ready and tie that down here. Did with it just as I did on the same, same on the other feather, on the black feather to pinch away the long, long feathers. So the tail is looking something like this. And what you're going to do now, you're going to trim away the uh, excess material, the uh, rest of the marble here. And then we're going to reinforce the body a little bit. Um, because there is a palmering on the fly that comes over the body material. Uh, one thing you can do is either leave a wire now at the tail. We are not doing that. Um, I'm gonna give it like a little reinforce with the uh, sapper cap, both for the eyes and uh, for the body. I should be doing more of that on my channel. I often get comments about that I forgot this and that. Uh, that's true. I, I should do more of this in my video, and I just admit, admit, admit that here and now. But uh, using those uh, this glue, either this or or just head cement, it makes the uh, increases the durability of the fly. So uh, here's a body material. That's this uh, Kelly Green uh, crystal brush. Or Chineo. So uh, since there is a palmering on the fly, I should maybe add like a wire on it to have like a wire there hanging on the uh, on the butt of the fly, but uh, or a tapping loop. But uh, we are not doing that. I'm going to show you another method which I use sometimes to reinforce the body and make it stronger, but. Uh, also using like a using like a tippet, like a tan lips tippet, or something that's a transparent thing, 
that um, that will make the fly really durable too. So the um, fly itself is just named after this material which you are wrapping around the uh, body now. It's just called Kelly Green because it's made out of this Kelly Green uh, channel. I'm not sure where it's from. I think this, this has to be from either Hairland Dublin or some, something like that. And then we keep this guy hanging. We will not do this, uh, make a hat of it right here. We are going to um, reinforce uh, the body and we are going to place this palmering on, on first. And I'm using a black uh, cock or black saddle, uh, like a rooster saddle, a long black uh, feather. So I tie that in right here. If you tie the rat. And to have a wire in the back waiting for it so you can catch the uh, feather or the palmering feather with that. That is one method. I'm going to show you one cheeky method to do this. That is to bring the thread back. Wiggle the thread in between so it's like not trapping down any, any fibers of the Kelly Green material. And place it there. Then we take our um, then we take our um, uh, palmering feather and wrap that backwards. Like so. Catch it with our thread here, take tight wraps, maybe a couple of them. And start to work the thread forward by wiggling it in between. So neither the fibers of the feather or the palmering or the body material will be trapped down. And we snip away the rest of the feather. You can use that for another fly. And then we start to work, work our way forward. And then we're going to bring the thread forward in front of the whole thing. And then you see the space we leave be, be in front of the, between the hook eye and the actual eyes of the fly. And then we zigzag it, zigzag the bottom material around. So one above and one below. You can watch it slowly. There is also this Nobler video I have where I show this done uh, more often. Um, that doing this it creates like a hat on the on the fly around the eyes, and when we uh, it goes like an eight around the eyes. Uh, one method of using while tying tying this kind of a fly is that you don't create like a hat on it like this, like a, just like I did. That would be to place the eyes uh, further, closer to the hook eye. And just keep like a couple of millimeters there just in front of it to uh, to do the refinishing job. Uh, some people do that, some people like to tie the fly like this, but there's a little bit bulkier hat, hat on it that uh, pushes water. And I like to tie it like this. So then we build up like a little hat here and do the, the finishing job. And then you've got yourself uh, the Kelly Green fly ready. 
it's uh, been yeah tremendously good working fly up in the Vega Vatna area in the central highlands of Iceland for round trot. Uh, personally, I haven't fished it too much and, and hooked and hooked on other patterns, but this is among one of the very very must have patterns for the Vega Vatna area. I'm told that by experienced uh, anglers up there. So, Kelly Green is ready here uh, for you guys. Uh, we, of course, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Here it's how it, here it's how it looks. I'm gonna tune the focus for you. Looks like this. It's uh, it catches fish a lot. Not the not necessarily the most prettiest fly of all of them, but that doesn't matter when. When it works, Place, placing a little little sap gap on the on the knot there to make it secure, and then it's ready to go out fishing. I just want to say to you guys, uh, thanks for watching all those almost 18 minutes, and remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys in the next video.